Well, I got this drill press recently. Let me give you a backstory to this. Uh, I was dumping some scrap metal at work in a scrap yard, and uh, it's like pouring down rain. I saw this beauty covered in mud. It's like totally wet as can be, soaking. So, anyways, I bought it from them, and uh, for next to nothing, I was really expecting it to not work. I thought maybe I could replace the motor or do some repairs or something. Anyways, after it dried out and stuff, brought it home, fired it up, worked like a champ. Nothing wrong with it. It's like awesome. So, ever since, that's been like probably a year ago, give or take. And it just works fine. It's never not worked. And so, uh, I finally set out to do a little bit of restoration work. Just in terms of uh, rust removal, I'll bring you in for a closer look. There's loads and loads of rust all over this thing. It's pretty poor shape. But uh, for a long time, I was thinking about going to buy a drill press. And it's like, I got this one. It kind of found me, as they say. So, uh, I don't know of any brand. There's no brand markings on it anywhere that I could locate. And, uh, Anyways, it hasn't failed me yet, and I'm not going to give up on it. So without further ado, let's check this thing out and uh, see what we can turn it into. Peace. So to remove this rust right here, I just used a 3-in-1 oil that's supposed to penetrate rust, and then a came at it with some steel wool and this little uh, metal wire attachment in the drill and then this little brush. And it took a little bit of doing, but after a little while I got it all off. Full disclaimer on this bit, this Evapo Rust stuff here, I put the chuck and some small parts in. I let it sit for a while and then rinsed it out real good with water. I did a bit of research and a lot of people online are saying not to put the chuck in there because there's bearings and different things that this and that, blah, blah, blah. Look it up for yourself before you do any kind of restoration on a drill press because if you've got some antique classic or something, you may think twice about doing that part of the process. On this one, you know, I was uh, not too worried about it, so. Do your own research is what I'm saying before you get too far into that. I added this little clip of my man buddy because uh, to show that it was like the coldest day in all of history in my life. It was freezing, snowing about three inches. So um, that's my clip of the snow that day. Now to turn my three handles, I was using this piece of tulip poplar that my dad gave me. A while back I had been uh, looking forward to turning it for some time since he gave it to me and um, turned really well. It was really easy to work with. I decided to make all three of the knobs different and uh, get a little practice with the skew chisel here. And yeah, that, that wood really worked out nice. So I'll show a couple of instant replays here, but uh, I was using this epoxy, putting it on the threaded insert here, and then tapping it in with a mallet. And bam, right there, the third one broke in half. So frustrated, I just grabbed one of the cutoffs and used it. That's how that worked. Deal with it.
It is pretty frustrating when that happens, I'm not gonna lie. But life goes on. Put on a coat of primer all the way around this thing and uh, really needed it. After that I went with two coats of paint. There's some paint we had left over from painting the room in the house and really liked the way it came out. It looked really good. Painted my knobs blue to uh, give it a little bit of something different than the norm. Screw those back in, that's all there is to it. I was really happy with the way this project came out. Um, wasn't sure if I even wanted to keep this drill press. Now I certainly do. I like it. It's a, not a lot of horsepower. It's just a good little something to drill little holes for scroll saw projects and stuff. So thanks for watching. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace.